Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to the PUBG EU Pro Scrims. My name is Jarosaro, and we're hopping into game number four now. This is on Erringal, our final Erringal game of the day. We've had two Miramars, two Erringals, and we're going to be getting two Tagos, which is super interesting. We haven't had this in Pro Scrims before. Tago, of course, will eventually be added to the competitive map pool in PUBG. So very, very excited to see how those scrims are going to be playing out. But for now, it is our final Erringal game of the evening. We have a 4 o'clock to a 10 o'clock plane path, a little bit pulled towards the center compared to the first Erringal game. And I think most teams will be relatively happy with this. We had a contest on Ferry Pier last game. We'll see if that ends up being the case once more. It looks like it is. We remember last time we had Exalt on the east side, Win or Die, and Orglis 4 on the west. So three teams are battling for Ferry Pier. At the moment, it looks like all three teams are very much there again. Let's see if anyone ends up peeling off or if people just grab vehicles and go. Dogs, I want to say, is in the lead to grab this vehicle and head. No, he's opting to get the compound instead. You can see he's not fully sending down. Molodoct and Fate, however, will be grabbing the vehicle. Let's see if they use that to move away. Dogs is going a little further on. He's got the eSports Dasher. Is this going to mean they simply move off? It is. Win or die have gone far. Fate and Feyre is to found guns. Dogs are trying to evade fire. Molodoct in a car. Relatively close to Tarkas as well. Extremely close to Tarkas, in fact. Oh, no. Oh, no. Has Molotov got a gun? He has. He's picked up an M4. I don't even know if he's got any ammo. He needs to get the hell out of there. Oglas 4 and Exalt. Still very much at each other's throats. Tarkas gets a shot in, but not enough to get the knock onto Molodot. AK on the stairs should be enough to deter him. Double barrel shotgun definitely will be. Tark is pushing in. Double barrel. That's what you get for the thirsty. Dogs, this is not close enough, unfortunately, to make the support count. He's going to come in and try and trade. But again, against a double barrel, this is so unbelievably risky. Orgless Fall, though, absolutely going for it. Door once again being open, but he doesn't technically have to peek. Opts to with the jump. And that's the return fire on the shotgun. Anything you can do, I can do better, they say. And Dogs will get one as well. DBS over here. Only four shots left for Arctic. Tries to move around the corner of the building. Doesn't make it. Masinic will be able to take him down. Feyerist and Fate very far away, unfortunately. I don't think they're going to be able to help much. VSS and Bison. It's the 9 mil challenge coming here from Feyerist. He was playing my custom games last Saturday. Love it. Gets the knock and the flush onto She Created. Almost no recoil on the PP19. Delicious to play with. In my opinion, quite an underrated weapon. Fairest and Fate now. A duo for Exalt. They're up against Dogsers and Masinic. Remaining duo for Orglis 4. Once again, fighting it out tooth and nail. Win or die in the meantime. All four of them just chilling. They're on the east side, waiting for the fighting to subside, waiting for those two teams to weaken each other, and they're very happy. Oh! To come in a little bit later on, although Dogsers has something to say about that as well. What does Circle have to say about it? Jeez! Okay, okay, okay. We're going up to uh, west of Yasnaya Lake is the center of Next Circle, so that's going to get very interesting indeed. Um, it means that a lot of teams are going to be rotating early. Pacific Esports in particular might be moving into one half of BBL. Clip and Smash. Very, very close. Rupture will actually move almost straight into Clip. Be very careful indeed. Why did he take this head on? I don't know. Smash gets the trade. Clip goes down, but Rupture continued to commit. Oh, the rest of Pacific Esports are going to be pushing in now. Feel like they almost have to commit at this point they are they are committing rupture trying to stay hidden great headshot coming out of there from noxy and smash now struggling oh wow beautiful stuff from toy 
that's actually helped them not only rescue the situation but give them the upper hand as well primals manage a third party they're getting the revive onto rupture rather than chasing down the remaining kill which i think is the smart move pacific esports back up to four they don't have any points to show for it but they have got all of their team alive whereas bbl are gonna have to move back to t junction and possibly move back to warehouse here with only two clip and smash unfortunately are down and out of this game Meanwhile, oh Jesus. Meanwhile, with ammo in the DBS and the 4X, because of course. Oh, this is going to get fun, isn't it? The Cynic well up for this. Fairest. Top floor of the barn. Nine mil challenge still going strong. VSS and Bison. Dogs is thinking about peeking. VSS on full auto, just so much fun to play sometimes, but this must be such a frustrating situation for both of these teams. Neither of them want to give up the loot spot. Neither of them have protection from the other, by the way. This is perfectly legit, from what I can tell. And this is the last time they're going to get to do this uh, today, because we're moving on to Tago after this as well. Winnow Die also being very patient. If they haven't seen much of the action by now, I'd be tempted to say they need to get a uh, get a bit of a wiggle on, really. Hiruzen looking for vehicles, but I think they were all taken earlier. <gasps> Uh-oh. Oh, dear. Hiruzen taking this very slowly, wants to make sure the first shot is a headshot against Fate. It hasn't seen him yet. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And that is the end of that chapter. Hiruzen gets the knock. Win or die. Are off the mark. Does that buy Hiruzen a vehicle? That's kind of what I want to know. So fate knocked and killed. Is there a vehicle here? No, there isn't. So win or die might stay around and fight this actually. Any more crashes coming up here? Not that I can see, but Salva Esports getting close enough to Primal that it's a little uncomfortable. Primal split, though, and not contesting this house here, so we're fine. Have Ding at spotted that this is a split? It's only one gun. It's only one gun. And Ding are therefore going for it. Rustin Ma has not fooled them. And this is problematic. Ding are so good at being aggressive and so good at spotting that there may be opportunities to uh, push in when there isn't a full squad. Rustin Ma nearly gets one of the kills. All sorts of third party action coming in here now. Oh my god, Rustin Ma. So sick. Get drops down. Ding now listening for follow-up. Rustin Ma playing this. So smart! Almost gets sale as well. But doesn't quite make it. Ding eliminated. Exalt in short order after that. We've also got Luminox going up against Foot Esports. And Orglis 4, that's all the way down in Ferry Pier, are eliminated by win or die. So, Orglis 4 and Exalt both going down. Win or die, who are the team that came in afterwards to mop up. Like we always said, we're most likely to be the ones walking away from this. They'll have to run to get additional vehicles, but they will find them. And they've got three kills. And the price they've paid is a late entry into Phase 1, which is not horrible, you know? It's not horrible. Uh, if Phase 2 is like a 2 o'clock hard shift, that could be interesting. We'll wait and see. Circle is about to pop. Let's take a look. No, that's fine. Five o'clock hard shift. We will take that all day long if we're busy rotating late from Ferry Pier. That is all good. Severny teams are going to have to move down south. They're going to have to do it very, very quickly indeed. And Tropic down onto the edge of the cliffs 
where the Wu apparently are lying in wait. Who is that? That's Quizzy. I don't think they know Quizzy's here. Ooh. That was so painfully close. They don't. Beautiful double tap there from Quizzy onto Mexi. Very much fair enough. Well played. Straight into the car as well, not looting the body. Saying, if you have friends coming in to help rescue your position, I don't want to be caught looting. I need to be alive for my teammates. Very, very sensible stuff. And Wu escape will survive with three players left on their team moving into this phase number two phase two centering in on j compound digital athletics pretty much have that on lockdown at the moment pacific esports looking for a way in they're going into a full tilt that's very split at the moment but it depends on whether pacific recognize that they're split they're happy to take the craters in yasnaya fields if they realize that for example there's only one gun coming at them from this uh from these buildings they might just go ahead and grab territory but i don't think they've realized that very difficult to spot that dynamically inside a game win or die in the meantime i've used pachinki as a staging point as they get into circle now as well and foot esports gonna be rotating near them i don't think they're gonna go through pachinki so i fully expect them to do that but they might even go down the road if they go down the road this is interesting i don't think any team would honestly expect someone to be in pachinki waiting for them and to be fair winner dive only just shown up hc with three hp not expecting to be ambushed here and suddenly in rotation winner die and foot esports have gotten themselves into a right old tussle winner die about to be in the blue for a second time fighting a team this is not what foot esports wanted Win or die, I've got to be asking themselves, really? How how bad luck do we actually need? AC super close to where this is happening right now as well. If he can get a, a towards Beamy and they can just get back in the car and go, I think that's honestly the better outcome for foot esports, if I'm honest. T-Bone and Vard have decided to keep driving. I think that's the right call. Yeah, they're getting in cars and moving. Absolutely the right call. Astro Pilecki thinking about going up towards school. Primal taught him a lesson there. Pacific Esports now. Remember how we were saying they could have moved up when Full Tilt just had one gun in the building? They waited quite a long time and Full Tilt met, uh, went into a 2-2 split instead. So this now becomes significantly harder for Pacific Esports to pull off. And as a result, they lose Celtic while rotating rotating very close to Yepa. they stop as a result apartments are taken by Augler so they have to keep moving oh no two different squads that's digital athletic to the right as well rupture trying to get some bandages off honestly you have to get like three or four we're just going for the shack Pacific don't feel like they have much of an alternative. To be fair, it's quite close to the center, but geez, what a horrible position to be in. Savam have gotten themselves into the apartments. Bottom left apartment means that they are contesting with Orglis. Wu Escape looking like they want to contest as well. Orglis now has to not be in separate apartment buildings. Multiple squads could be pushing them in. Although if Wu Escape choose to go into the same apartment building as Savam. Of all the possible pushes in, this is the highest octane, that is for sure. Oh! Ibby getting shotgun to Helen back. Shilla getting the double as well. And Wu escape just as quickly as they head out. They die. Quizzy also falls victim. That was very, very quick indeed. We've got a fourth team coming in here. It's Foot Esports into the center building. 
T-Bone's moved out west. AT needs to find a way to safely revive Vard, but Kepler is in exactly the same building as they are. It's all kicking off here. Three different squads, non-stop action. Luminox getting a look in as well, although I think that uh, that knock is going to trample all over their momentum, at least for the time being. Mad stuff, this. Good esports in the middle. Savam have got bottom left. Woo, we're going to make this fall. But Savam successfully repelled them. There were two footy sports players in that building. Kep has found one. Vard is the other. S12K. Also shotgun. Why the hell not? He thinks Ketba's in the bathroom because he's heard sounds there, but he's actually on the other side of the wall on the outside of the building. Now knows he's outside. Here's the grenade being put so smart. Immediately moves out. Primal, what's going on there? Luminox Planet eliminated. Primal, that's sniping them actually from school still. We've got win or die on the south side. Again in a tussle. This time, Ramek Box is already out. Thunder, their opponents here, and Free Kill actually just running down to try and get any sort of angle from the east side. Trying to reposition themselves to just be in a better place to win the fight. And both sides back up. This is strange. Thought they might have gone for the angle against um, under there, like down from just here, sort of holding this, I would have thought. But maybe win or die are looking to leave this area now. We'll wait and see. Yuruzen's still in the building, so it doesn't look like he's imminently leaving. I don't know what the intentions are here, guys. Extens is in a car. Are we picking people up and heading off? I think Thunder are trying to work that out, if I'm being perfectly honest. Marbo looking for an angle on Hiruzen. Won't get one. Again, they're just hanging around. I, I thought they would have driven off by now. I'm really confused by this. Hiruzen's getting hit by third party. I think that might even have been... Is that Pacific that hit him? I feel... Oh, it could have been Digital Athletics, to be honest. But either way, very, very far away. Win or die do actually move out now. I thought they were going to do this slightly earlier, but it's fine. Thunder, gift them a couple of passing shots. Oh, no. Are they moving back? They're going back to try and take out Thunder. It's a fake out. It's not going to work though. Thunder have gotten in their own vehicles and have moved out east. And I don't think this pays off for Winter Die. Because their vehicles are left west. They're going to have to run so far. Let's go. Go, 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 go. Yeruzin has stayed anchored. Apartments, no change. Although Foot Esports have got one building each. Orglis have two. Primal are in the northwest now. Let's see what happens with the next zone. Apartments are out. It's on J Compound. It's the world versus digital athletics. Let's be real. Okay. So what are the people in apartments going to do here? That's the question. All of these squads have to move. In theory, Orglis move first, then Foot, then Savem, then Primal, if everyone wants to stay peaceful. This game has been anything but peaceful. I 
feel like foot esports are the team in the most precarious position here Orglis are trying to move out vard letting them know that actually i've got a bit of an angle here those vehicles are Savem. they've managed to have them protected on the uh, bottom left of the map here there's no one else to shoot out the tires so why the hell not so they might be able to get out of here for free Dear God, Pacific Esports and uh, Shack Life. Not going to be fun. More tires getting taken out. And headshot through the uh, through the slit. Not good. Great angle there to get the headshot onto Rupture, by the way. Appreciate that. Ha! <laughs> Bait crate. Not going to happen. Win or die. Full send. Full send into full tilt. They're super split. They have to take one of these fights. Two members of the team down. Extends and Nayosh. It's only Hiruzen. They had to try. I do not blame them for this at all. The problem is... Vehicle, 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 vehicle. Out, 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 out. Doesn't matter. And Hiruzen's going to deny the point. By falling out of the vehicle instead. Not much you could do in that situation when two of your teammates go out so quickly. Full tilt, have RTX go down. That buys Thunder a little bit of wiggle room to try and get in position and get a little bit of a return frag in. Iconics and Soketo, very split. If free kill gets a beautiful flag on Soketo, which he does, suddenly Thunder have a little bit of momentum in this fight. RTX needs to heal ASAP so that they can fire together on free kill and make sure that they get the return frag. That hasn't happened so far, but elsewhere, Iconics manages to get the double. That's Duff down and Marbo's about to go out as well. Thunder are well and truly about to lose this fight. However, Full Tilt wasn't plain sailing for them. They've lost Soketo. They're having to heal a little bit. They're up to six kills now. And they're going to be getting some decent points out of this game. They're into the placement points with the top eight. Digital Athletics still sitting pretty. Still waiting. Phase five. T-Bone. Not loving life right now. And it's eight damage a second in this blue. With Orgulus patiently waiting. Oh my god, he manages to get Weston as well. Foot Esports eliminated. T-Bone with an excellent spray. Orglis, though, able to get the immediate revive. All four of them are alive, but what the hell can they do from here? They're going to need the world's biggest smoke train, and Digital Athletics are waiting for them at the other end. Is it too little too late for them? Metralius might have additional lethals, but he doesn't. It's the one smoke and nothing else. Imagine if he had four frag grenades. That would have been absolutely horrific. Ding on the edge of circle. Now getting targeted by Exhalation. Oh, send you off to one side. Doing some very sneaky things indeed against Exhalation. Do they now have to move from that compound? Is this grenade going to purchase it? Oh, that's beautiful. That's actually beautiful. That is a work of art. Bounces back as well. Hoba and Daboom both going down. Salik and Izum. If might be able to get the Insta Revive onto Daboom. The Insta Revive onto Hoba might have worked. Oh god. Maybe not at that rate. Now they just have to run. The boom needs to get them. Oh, is he going to get the first aid off? He is. Only just. Phase six, guys. This hurts. Will he even get into the vehicle in time? He will. 35, 27, 19, 11, 3. This is not how Exhalation wanted to exit this compound at all. The boom on three hit points at a dream. And Ding are chasing those final three hit points as well. They know that this is a desperation maneuver, but Daboom seems to be able to get away fine for now. Lyran might be able to get the re refrag for Digital Athletics. Spots him there. Just behind the car. Next zone still on J. Digital Athletics looking like they're in a very, very good position indeed. Daboom survives. Sail and aim lol. Remaining for Ding. They're on five kills so far as we hop into the top six. Gonna start calling Daboom Emperor Palpatine. Somehow he survives. Orglis out. Very, very um eventful game for Orglis, has to be said. Full tilt looking at 
getting a few shots off towards Digital Athletics, but ultimately, even though they're on nine kills so far, they are not in an advantage position. Yepa also within their sights. I love what Ding are doing here. They're trying not to fight at range. Getting up close and first. Oh my god, Sale. They shouldn't... Or, they basically shouldn't be allowed to reach this position, but they have. And Sale and Aimlol somehow, some way, doing an incredible job of squeezing in every inch of land they can get in their quest to move up towards Digital Athletics. Code Marco and Lyran back up in the double story. Aim lol, however, has made his way through into the store. Swapping out now for the S12K. Ten rounds there as well. That's going to be rather deadly if he gets in front of them at short range. Swapping back for the Mark 12 now, deciding that pushing up might not be the thing he wants to do just yet. Shooting a couple of toes. As you do. The sale continuing to look for creative ways in. Phase 7, by the way. J compound still in. Yep, yeah, in with a great chance. If DA have to come out of J compound. Yep, yeah, could be in a great position to capitalize on that with three players left alive. Still five teams total, though, at the 27-minute mark. This game has played out significantly more slowly than game number three. Aimlol is being engaged now by DA, which puts a bit of pressure on Sale to see if there's something else he can do. Tender lost, navigates himself into a lovely position. Taking out Exhalation. A couple of mollies as well. Forcing Digital Athletics to split. Does this buy time for sale? Oh, buys time for him to get a vehicle. Very Oh my god, phase eight still includes J Compound. Right. This ding Digital Athletics fight was important before. For the outcome of this game, it's now critical. If Digital Athletics can survive this fight without taking, uh, without losing a player and preserving a lot of their utility and meds, this game should be theirs to lose. Should be theirs to lose. Notice how DA are very actively not looking uh, at Ding right now. They understand the status quo. They're not looking to push into Ding. Iconic's down, and that means we are down to three. Ding as a duo. Yepa as a trio. Digital Athletics, the other trio. Yepa now in trouble. Because Ding and DA are not... Fighting each other at the moment. Ooh. Grown onto Code Marco. Beautiful shot to prevent him from holding the position down. But look at how much open ground they have to cover. I think that's the real problem. You win those 1v1s, but unless you win three of them in a row at range, with the possibility of Ding also shooting at you, this is rough. Out the edge of the garage door as well. Atreleus peaks, trying to keep all of the angles covered off. They know that Yep is in a frustrating position. Next zone is phase nine. So we'll be moving closer to Yepa. This is how they can swing their chances. Digital Athletics and Ding both have to come back out. Both have to move south. That's where Yepa can strike. Hang 
angles being held co marco crucially gets aimlaw it's only sale left for ding now that was a critical knock looking back into the house next door oh shotgun to the face thank you very much Sam. he's out of the game now how much ground did yepa get when we were distracted with this not that much but that's okay they know their game is to wait they need to wait until digital athletics are forced out of the compound that's how long the smokes have to last them frag grenades to try and hold out if Digital Athletics come out of the buildings early, the frags will hurt them. More smokes coming in. Fender lost nearly going down to a frag grenade. Second one not forthcoming. Might have actually resulted in a knock for DA. Yepa are just zoning out, buying time. The longer this game goes on, the more likely they are to win. Very, very smart. All of the utility coming out simultaneously. Digital Athletics now out of the compound being pressed into the corner here behind the fence but we have the breakthrough lyron gets grown and lyron getting grown beautiful oh wow hang on a second that's thunder lost and yepa getting two at the very end after digital athletics got the first knock huge turnaround by yepa for nine kills they get the chicken dinner here in game number four really really lightning quick last second reactions very very well done uh thunder lost the hero there at the end yep i come away with the chicken dinner digital athletics though great showing from them very very strong positional advantage didn't quite make it count but a very good result second place in six kills and then ding in third very entertaining the way they kept up the pressure against da at the j compound they come third with five